The Solana network uses the proof-of-stake consensus mechanism to confirm transactions. In a proof-of-stake system validators lock up a large amount of tokens to be able to verify transactions and earn rewards. If they do anything shady, they lose their tokens in what is known as getting slashed. So, usually for each block or time slot, the network chooses a validator to verify the transactions and the other validators vote on his block, either accepting or denying his work. In Solana, this chosen validator is called the leader, and it is chosen randomly, but his chance of getting chosen increases according to the amount of tokens he staked, and there is a leader's schedule anyone can see for the next leaders for the next time slots. So, each leader knows his turn in advance. But the problem here is the differences in time between leaders. For example, let's say that each slot lasts for half a second. So each leader has half a second to verify the transactions and produce a block. So the next leader can build on it. But the thing is that there is no universal clock for these leaders. For example, two leaders may produce two blocks at the same time, and now other validators have to decide which leader's clock is correct. And as you can tell this takes time and slows down the network. And this is where proof of history comes in to act as a universal clock for all leaders and validators. Welcome to Cryptobi, where we explain cryptocurrencies and DeFi topics in the most simple and beginner-friendly way. In this video, you will know what is proof of history and how it actually works. We have included timestamps, so you can easily skip to any part you want. So, let's get started. The proof of history is a way of keeping time in a blockchain. We will explain what that means in a minute, but the most important thing is that it is not a consensus mechanism. It is a way for leaders to know when to start producing a block, and a way for validators to verify that the leader produced the block in his turn. To be able to understand how proof of history works, you need first to understand something called a hash function. A hash function is an algorithm that you give it any data, and it gives you a hash for this data. Proof of history in Solana uses the SHA-256 hash function, you can think of it like a black box that you give it any type of data, and it will give you a hash. This input data can be a word, a full sentence, or an entire book, it doesn't matter, it will always give you a hash with a fixed length, which is a series of 64 letters and numbers. If you put in the same word again, it will give you the same hash always. But if you change the word a little bit like capitalizing a single letter, it will give you a totally different hash. The most important thing here is that you can never get the input from the hash. If for example, I gave you this hash, you can never know the data that generated this hash. Now, you know what is a hash function. Let's now get to proof of history. Remember the slots we talked about earlier? Let's assume that each slot has a leader and the next leaders are known according to the leader's schedule. So how does proof of history help a leader know when to start producing a block? Well, all leaders count time by running the hash function many times. We know that this may be confusing to you, but we will break it down very simply. Each slot has a specific duration, but this duration is not counted in seconds like how we count time, the slot duration here is counted by something called ticks. So for example, the duration of one slot may be 10 ticks, and to count one tick you have to run the hash function for many times, let's say for five times. So. Let's assume that you are the third leader in the schedule, so you need to count the time for two slots before you start producing your block. You know that each slot lasts for 10 ticks, and you need to wait for two slots, so you need to count 20 ticks before it is your turn. To count one tick you have to run the hash function five times, so in total you have to run the hash function 100 times before producing your block. So, how do you actually run the hash function? Well, you start with any random input like Solana for example, and get the hash for it, let's call it hash1, and then you take hash1 and put it into the hash function again to get hash2, and then do the same thing for hash3 and so on. As you can guess, it will take some time to do this 100 times to get to hash number 100. When you produce a block you give the 100 hashes you generated to the validators to prove that you waited for your turn and counted time correctly. Then, the validators will recalculate the hashes to verify that all hashes are correct before accepting your block. 
The idea is that generating these hashes takes time, and generating 100 hashes takes about the duration of two slots, which is about 800 milliseconds in our time. And since you generated the 100 hashes correctly, then this indicates that you waited for two slots before producing your block. If for example, a malicious leader wants to produce his block before the second leader, he would need to run the hash function 100 times and generate 100 hashes to be able to prove that he waited for his turn. All of this needs to happen before the second leader starts producing his block. Which in reality is very very hard to do, unless the third leader is much faster than the second leader in running the hash function, and the second leader has very bad network, so his block takes a very long time to reach the network. This is actually very hard because leaders can only use a single core of the CPU to generate these hashes and having a lot of CPU cores won't allow any leader to run the hash function faster. If you are wondering why, let's see an example. Let's say that you want to run the hash function 100 times but in a short time. So, you split up the 100 tries among 4 cores. You want each core to generate 25 hashes, so core number 1 from hash 1 to hash 25, and core number 2 from hash 25 to hash 50 and so on. As you can see the first core only will run, while the other cores will be waiting for a hash to start with. Core number 2 will start working when it gets hash number 25, so running multiple cores will be useless. Validation on the other hand can be done by multiple GPU cores at the same time. As we already have the hashes we just need to make sure that they are correct. So for example, you can validate the 100 hashes a lot faster by splitting them up among 4 cores, now all cores will start working, as they have the starting hashes and this way validation will be 4 times faster. If you got the idea and have been enjoying the video, give us a like as a new channel it helps us tremendously. So, as we have said, this idea of generating hashes to count time in proof of history allows leaders to take their turns in a fast way without communicating with each other and slowing the network. But that is not the only use of proof of history. Proof of history is used also in timestamping and ordering transactions. When a leader is producing a block, he gets the hash of the latest block before him, adds a transaction to it, and then put them all into the hash function to get a new hash. And then takes that hash, add a new transaction to it, and then put them all into the hash function again to get a new hash and so on. By doing that, validators on the network can be 100% certain that this transaction happened before hash number 80 was generated for example, as the transaction was used in generating that hash, so we can be sure it existed before the hash was generated. Also, the transaction itself when it was sent to the leader included the last block hashed seen by the wallet on the network. So we can also be 100% certain that the transaction happened after that hash was generated. So for example, if a transaction includes block hash number 57 as the last seen hash, we can be certain that the transaction happened after that block with hash number 57. And if the same transaction was used in generating hash number 98, we can also be certain that this transaction happened before generating that hash and so on for all other transactions. This way we can easily order transactions before sending them to the validators and all these validators can recalculate the hashes to verify the timings of the transactions. If you are still confused how these hashes help the Solana network order transactions, here is a simple analogy. Let's say that you found a newspaper edition but with no date on it and you want to know when it was released. So, you take the events written in the newspaper and Google them to know when exactly they happened. If for example the headline event happened on January 4, 2021, then you can be sure that this edition was released after January 4, 2021, as the event was included in the newspaper. And if after a while you found a photo with that edition in the background, you could be also certain that this edition was released before taking this photo. In this analogy, the newspaper is the transaction, the headline event is the last seen hash included in the transaction, and the photo is the new hash that was generated with this transaction. Let's now see how all of this happened and go over a quick overview of the entire proof of history mechanism. So, validators are running the hash function constantly to count the ticks, to know when it is their turn to be leaders and start producing blocks. When a validator becomes a leader, it starts receiving transactions and then verifies these transactions by removing the invalid or fraudulent transactions. After that, the leader executes the valid transactions and updates its version of the ledger. Then the leader starts ordering transactions by including them in the hashes like how we explained earlier. 
After the leader finishes some transactions, he sends them with the hashes to the validators, with also the empty hashes he generated during waiting for his turn. You may have noticed that the leader doesn't wait to finish a full block before sending to the validators, like on other blockchains like Bitcoin for example. Instead of that, the leader sends finished transactions to be verified, as it is working on the rest of the transactions, which helps the Solana network achieve these fast confirmation times. When validators receive the transactions from the leader, they first verify the empty hashes to make sure that it is the leader's turn. Then, they start verifying the transactions and updating their versions of the ledger. After the leader finishes the whole block, the validators send their votes on the block, if they accept it, then the block is finalized. You should know here that the next leader starts building on this block before it gets voted on by the validators. This is done to avoid slowing the network by waiting for votes. If for example, the previous block was rejected, but the leader has already built his block on top of it, then the two blocks get discarded by the network and the previous leader gets penalized. You should also know that it gets a lot technical than that, but we try to give you a quick overview to help you see how it all works, but of course, we made some simplifications to help you understand it. At the end of this video, we hope you learned what you need to know about proof of history and how it works and if you liked our video and want to reward our hard work. Give it a thumbs up, comment if you have any questions and subscribe to our channel and turn on the notifications so you don't miss our new videos. We promise they will be very simple and very easy. Thanks for watching.